Okay, now let's consider the wings. Basically, the wing size is set by the takeoff weight over the wing loading. And this wing loading is basically the lift per unit area. And this is based on structural and aerodynamic considerations. And the this is basically determined uh, by your technology level, um, and I won't really say any more about this now. Um, this is something that will come more into play when we uh, potentially look at structures and 3D wings. We'll spend more time talking about the tail. So recall what the purpose of the tail is. Counteract the moments. Produced by the wing, generally. And this moment that the tail produces is the product of the tail moment arm. On the tail lift, which is usually negative. So from this, you can see that the tail size is proportional to the wing size. And therefore, the tail lift sorry, and since the tail lift is proportional to the tail area, then we can say that the moment produced by the tail is proportional to the tail area times the tail moment arm. And this product has units of volume. So this leads to a tail volume coefficient method for the initial estimation of the tail size. So if we try to non-dimensionalize this for the vertical tail, the yawing moments, which tend to make the aircraft spin um, to be countered, are most directly related to the wingspan. So we'll define a tail, a vertical tail volume coefficient, C sub Vt, as the length of the moment arm for the vertical tail, the surface area of the vertical tail over the wingspan times the wing area. For the horizontal tail, it's the pitching moment, which basically makes the nose want to go up or down. And this has to do with the wing mean cord. So that the volume coefficient for the horizontal tail is the length of the moment arm for the horizontal tail, the area of the horizontal tail, over the mean cord of the wing and the surface area of the wing. Now usually the length L is approximated um, as the distance from the tail quarter cord 
to the wing quarter forward. And it's important to note that typically um, at the conceptual design stage, the wing and tail areas include the part that's hidden inside the fuselage. So to help illustrate what I mean by that, this is a center line of an aircraft. And here's the fuselage. This is a top-down view. Then the wing may look like that. And the horizontal tail may look like that. And this may be the mean cord. And this may be the mean cord. And so there's the quarter mean cord. There's the quarter mean cord. And this would be the length of the horizontal tail. And similarly, if we look at a side view of this, there's the side of the fuselage. There's the vertical tail, which may actually have a fairing. Um, but here's the cord, the mean cord, and there's the quarter mean cord. And so that will be the length for the vertical tail. Now, there's again some empirical data for these volume coefficients that can be found in Raymer, and I've included it in the PDF notes as well. Here, we'll just say that CHT varies from about 0.4 to 1, and CVT varies from about 0.02 to 0.09. And again, these vary depending on the type of aircraft that, uh, that we're designing. So then, in order to calculate the tail size, we have to estimate the moment arm. And we can use some typical data to help us with this. And this is going to depend on how the engines are mounted on the aircraft. So for a front-mounted propeller engine. The length will be approximately 0 0.6 of the fuselage length. If the engines are on the wings, as they are in most commercial transport aircraft, the length will be between 0 0.5 of the fuselage length and 0 0.55 of the fuselage length. And for aft mounted engines, at the rear of the aircraft, we'll be looking at 0 0.45 fuselage length to 0 0.5 fuselage length. 